So that was a really quick introduction as I'm keen to show DQS in action and hopefully we'll see some of these elements come together. Time for another live demo. So I'll minimize Excel and we'll go into the data quality client. Connect to our instance of DQS. And we have um, three key areas, the knowledge management maintenance, the data quality projects, and the administration site. So we're going to focus on really trying to build up our knowledge base. I've already created a knowledge base, and I can simply reopen it by uh, clicking on open. And as this opens, we'll see that I've already got one domain defined within this um, uh, knowledge base. So my domain is called product code, and it's a text, it's a string. I haven't set up any reference data, meaning I haven't got any external services that are going to provide any input into this domain. I'm going to uh, do this through my own discovery and my own editing of this domain. There is a domain rule, though. The domain rule states that all product codes must begin capital P, C, dash. And that will be applied whenever values are acquired within to, into this domain. At the moment, though, we've only got the default value, which is in effect a null value. So we'll do some work to add some values into this product code domain very shortly. And finally, we haven't got any of those global replace type terms at the moment, but we'll build one of those in a moment as well. So actually, what we're going to do first of all is build a second domain. So I can uh, click on create a domain. And we're going to call this domain product name. Again, it will be a string. Uh, we're not going to define any rules for this product, this particular domain, but we are going to create a term-based relation. So within the data we're going to be look at, we're looking at uh, the word short used to sometimes get abbreviated down to SHTS. So we're going to force whenever SHTS is encountered to be corrected to the full word shorts. So I'll just um, uh, just make sure that's committed. I've had problems in the past. Yes, that's still there. Excellent. So at this point, I won't do any more maintenance within this particular um, screen. I will click finish and that will then publish my changes to this knowledge base back to my DQS server. Now we want to uh, do some discovery with this, and we're going to do that by reopening the project, but this time opening it in knowledge discovery mode. So I've got a text file where I've got some very basic product information. I've got a column of product name, code, and I've also got a couple of extra columns called color and size, which we used previously in the MDS example. I've highlighted a few specific values which we'll see manipulated through the next process. First of all, we can see we have a value where actually the code isn't prefixed with PC. Similarly, we have a couple of product names where we're using the abbreviation for shorts. So let's just see this basic example and see what happens when we use this data within our um, uh, knowledge base. So back into the client, I'm going to pick the Excel file that's called product base. And then I'm simply going to map the source columns within that file to uh, the, dom uh, the domains within my knowledge base. Now, product code already existed, and I obviously, as you can imagine, practiced this demo many times, so it's remembering that mapping. But it's very easy to add the extra mappings just through the drop downs. Now, as, as we saw, there was also an extra column in my file called color. So I'd like to also bring that into my knowledge base. So actually, even from within this screen, I can click on create a domain and I can create myself a new domain interactively called color. And again, I will now map that to the file. Excellent. OK, so now I'm going to start the discovery by clicking next and click start. The file will be loaded and processed. 
on this screen we'll be able to see also a high level profile of that file in terms of values, uniqueness, completeness etc. Hopefully it'll only take a few seconds. Here we go. So we've got 11 values within the three columns we loaded from that file. Within the colour um, column we had six unique values whereas the others were all unique. And here we can see we have an invalid value against our product code. Finally, we can see that the actual completeness of the file was good, i.e. there weren't any missing values within those three columns I just loaded. So let's go to next, click on next, and then I'll be able to review the values that have actually been loaded into my domain. So we can see here that I have the six values which were referenced on the previous screen, all of which have got a green tick, so all of which are valid. There was no rule or anything set up within the domain to say that these shouldn't be considered as valid values within this domain. One of the things I can do here though is in my eyes cream and off-white are the same color so I'm actually going to link these two colors together. I'm going to consider them to be synonyms of each other and by clicking that button there which is the synonym button I've actually linked cream and off-white together so that now whenever data is um, processed it will and it ever finds the off-white um, value, it will actually consider that to be equivalent to the cream. If I wanted to, I can actually swap the relationship around and make off-white the primary value, so that cream now sits under off-white, and also I could um, disconnect the two uh, values, uh, of a, you know, disconnect the relationship between these. And you're not limited to two values, you can create a synonym group with as many values in it as you desire. So. This is how I'm going to leave my colored domain for the time being. In effect, with five values, including not, apl not applicable. Now let's have a look at product code. So here are my 11 values, but we can see here this time that one of those values has been marked as invalid because it failed the rule about having a capital P, C at the beginning of it. So I've got two options here. I can either accept it's invalid or I could mark it as an error, at which point it will always be rejected and ignored going forward. However, what I want to do is just simply correct the value by ensuring that now it has the correct prefix. And I can simply type that in to the cell as it was marked as invalid. Okay, nothing more to do on this screen. Finally, let's have a look at product name. No errors, everything looks good. Again, there was no rule. Um, but what we can see if we go back to the file we had two values using the abbreviation for shorts. Well, actually, they've now been loaded up, but with the corrected term for the full spelling of shorts. So that's a great result from that point of view. The only thing I don't like here, though, is that I've got a value MTN200, which again was in the file. And actually, I want to do the same thing and, and force that to get corrected if we ever encounter that file, uh, that value, sorry, so it fully specifies mountain. To do that, I need to mark this particular value as invalid, at which point I can then type in the corrected value. Okay, so we've now reviewed all the data and we've made some changes to help improve the knowledge within these domains that we've been working with. So now let's just click finish and I can publish this knowledge back to the DQS server so it's available for anyone who uses this knowledge base. Now let's just quickly review this back in data management because if we just go back into product name and look at the values where we've corrected the value we can see that it automatically creates a new value of the corrected term and it links the invalid value to that. Similarly, if I look at product code, I'll see that the invalid product code has been linked to a new corrected value. Finally, the last action we'll take on the uh, creation side is to create a composite domain. This is where you can bring multiple domains together to form a superset. So in effect, I can create a product composite domain that is made up of the three different domains. It will consist of the product name, the product code and the color and that together will allow me to start assessing the quality of data of a product domain in its own right. 
function again, click finish, and that will get published to the server. So far, so good. Right, the final action we'll need to take on our knowledge base. We now have it defined. We have some values against which we can assess the quality of our data. Um, also, we've put in place some rules to validate. We've put in place some um, corrections to data so it will help cleanse and enrich the data as we process it. The final thing we wish to do is create a match policy. By creating a matching policy, it will then allow us to start identifying duplicates within our data as we pass it through DQS. So to be able to create a match policy, you need to have a file through which you can, in effect, do your learning. So you will load, we'll load the file, we'll create some sort of match rule, configure it, and then we'll begin to see that it ha um, has the sort of behavior that we wish it to have in terms of identifying duplicates. And we're just going to step through that process now. So we're actually going to use a, a different file this time. So I've got a file called product, slightly bigger, still obviously trying to keep things small and simple and quick. Um, but here, for example, this might just be that we've tried to amalgamate a, a file containing all the information we know about product, but we know it's likely to have duplicates in because it's come from different sources, etc. So we're going to try and make sense of this file um, through the rest of this um, demonstration and making use of the knowledge base we've already built up. So if I just minimize that, and I'm going to select that file within the client. And again, just like the previous um, exercise, we're then going to map our columns. So I can select my uh, product name, map back to product name, color. And if I just click on here, we can actually see that it's detected that the three values I've brought together actually form a composite domain product. And so we'll be working within the context of the composite domain product. If I click Next, then we get to the crucial piece of the matching policy. And this is actually to create the rule. So I can click on Create a Matching Rule. I can give it a name. and I can create the elements of that rule itself. So because it knows we're working within the product composite, it's again pulled through all those three um, domains that form a product composite. Now, I've got about three options at this point to allow me to refine the rule that is going to help me identify duplicates within my data. The first thing I can specify is whether I need a column to be, a domain, sorry, to be an exact match or just similar using um, you know, textual matching, textual um, uh, similarities. So for product name, I'll leave it as similar. But for product code, I need that to be exactly the same. If there's any difference there, then as far as I'm concerned, it should not be considered, or it's highly unlikely it should be uh, you know, a, a two records that should be matched together. Color as well, we'll leave that as just needing to be similar. We then need to decide how much weighting we want to give to these different elements when we look at trying to score um, a match. So with product name, I'm going to give that 30. Product code, I'm going to give 60% weighting. And color will make up the rest so that we have an overall weighting of 100%. The final column then allows me to force something to be a, re a prerequisite, meaning that actually uh, this particular element of a rule has to hold true for a match to occur. So I could, in theory, actually force um, the product code to be a prerequisite, but actually giving it a weighting of 60% is likely to force that situation. But if the other elements of my um, uh, rule are, su are strong enough, but it gives me enough confidence, it may be the case that actually the product code for some reason wasn't correct, and therefore I do still want that match to take place. The final thing I need to do when I look at my um, <coughs> matching rule is just consider what the score is, at which point I will accept two rows to be the same. The standard setting is 80%, and we'll use that within this example. But again, this may be a, an element of a rule you wish to adjust about at what point you want two rows to be considered the same. Hopefully this will begin to make a bit more sense when I actually run the, uh, the, the, the rule. Just remove that. Oops. Okay. So the rule is um, the rule is now running. 
and it's only take a moment and we, we should begin to see what I've been trying to describe oops I suspect what happened there was I clicked the button twice let's just try that again hopefully fingers crossed 